Unless you live under a rock, you've heard the term belly breathing. Belly breathing is used by yoga teachers, personal trainers, physicians, doctors, therapists, and your everyday person to describe the correct way to breathe. Common knowledge is that most people breathe incorrectly. They breathe using their chest and their shoulders, and the correct way to breathe is with your diaphragm, which indicates the belly moving out and moving back with each breath. This common way of understanding the breath is that the chest and shoulders shouldn't move at all, and the only thing that should move as you breathe is your belly. This is a huge misconception. You see, the term belly breathing and diaphragmatic breathing are not the same, and belly breathing is incomplete at best to describe the correct way to breathe. This is a common misunderstanding on the breath. We think that deep breath simply means breathing into the belly. But when you tell someone, breathe into your belly, oftentimes what they do is actually just push their bellies out as they breathe in and bring their bellies back in as they exhale. This is not correct breathing. All you're doing is simply pushing out your internal organs. This can cause a disconnection to your deeper core, destabilizing your spine, and ultimately can cause injuries. The term belly breathing is not the correct way to breathe. Diaphragmatic breathing, however, is the correct way to breathe. And so what's the difference? What's the difference between belly breathing and diaphragmatic breathing? Well, you see, when you take a correct breath, when you breathe correctly, it's not just your belly that should move. Your entire torso, your belly, your ribs, your chest, should expand in 360 degrees, right? It's not just your belly pushing out and going back in. It's your belly going out to the front. It's your lower back going out to the back. It's your ribs going horizontally. It's your chest and sternum lifting and moving away. You see, it's a full body breath. If I was to look at a person breathing diaphragmatically from the top down, you should be able to see everything expand in 360 degrees, belly, ribs, chest, in all directions. This is a correct diaphragmatic breath. Diaphragmatic breathing has some serious benefits to your overall health and the way you feel. When you breathe correctly with this diaphragmatic breath, you will be activating the parasympathetic nervous system you will be activating the vagus nerve, bringing a sense of calm and relaxation to your body. You see, many of us are stuck in fight or flight. We're breathing with our chest. We're breathing with our neck. We actually have muscles that, uh, in our neck that attach to our first rib that actually lift our ribs in an emergency situation. Problem is, so many of us are stuck in our heads in constant stress that we are stuck in this way of breathing, causing this fight or flight sympathetic state to be our natural state. So by correctly learning how to breathe diaphragmatically, not just belly breathing, but 360 degree full body breathing, this is going to have immense effect on your nervous system, on your health, your overall well-being. You will be more calm, more grounded, more able to effectively respond to the stresses that life throws at you. So how can you begin to breathe diaphragmatically in this 360 degree manner? There's a particular form of pranayama, which is yoga breath work called dirga breath, three part breath. I'll make a separate video with a follow along routine so you can truly learn this breath. But basically you're learning how to breathe with your belly, you're learning how to breathe with your ribs expanding in all directions, and finally your chest and sternum lifting. That doesn't mean your shoulders rising, chest and sternum lift. But an actionable step that you can take right now to better learn how to diaphragmatically breathe is to forget about breathing into the belly. I want you to breathe as deep into your body as possible. Think of your entire torso all the way from your perineum otherwise known as your taint, at the very bottom of your torso, all the way to the uh, bottom of your neck. Think of that as a container. I want you to breathe to the very bottom of that container. Think of the back of your tailbone, your perineum. 
I want you to use your mind and direct the breath down into this area. As Elliot Hulse used to say, breathe into your balls. This is going to help you connect with this full body br breath. And you may notice that if you can connect, it may be difficult to at first, but as you practice, if you can connect with this deep body breath, you'll notice your belly will expand, not just out, but in all directions. You'll notice your ribs, you'll notice your low back. You'll notice that every part of you expands. Now, you might have some restrictions. Your diaphragm might be stuck in spasm. You probably have some dysfunctional breathing patterns, some neurotic holding patterns in your mind that's causing your body not to be able to breathe properly. And so you might need some visceral work, some body work, some structural work to uh, unlock these adhesions and get your body opened up so it can breathe properly. But the practice of breathing diaphragmatically is much more than just belly breathing. 360 degree breath in all directions, starting at as low as you can. Full body breath is the, the key to unlocking more calm, more grounded, more effective breathing that honestly affects your entire life because you breathe all day, every day. Breathing and walking are the most foundational, the most functional things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we should be dedicating some time to optimizing the way that we breathe specifically. So the next time that someone says belly breathing or breathe into your belly, take a moment and truly know how a diaphragmatic breath is. It's not just breathing into the belly. It's full body breathing, breathing into your body as a unit in all directions, expanding and letting it go. Hope this helps.